we now want to discuss Kirchhoff's rules. And Kirchhoff's rules apply to circuits where you have a bit more of a complicated uh, structure rather uh, than the cases where series and parallel reduction are applicable. Okay? Now, um, as we have a circuit here, you'll see that I can reduce this circuit using series and parallel rules, uh, but I'm going to use this circuit to uh, introduce uh, Kirchhoff's rules to you, show you that both methods give you the same answer, and then we will also look at a uh, slightly more advanced um, Kirchhoff problem where we have to use Kirchhoff's rules. Okay, so what are Kirchhoff's rules? Well, Kirchhoff's rules essentially are statements about the circuit uh, using energy, uh, or I'm sorry, conservation laws. Okay, they're essentially conservation laws. And there are two rules. And the first rule says, uh, suppose I have some current in three different branches. Okay, now this bottom loop, or I should say bottom branch, everywhere in the blue, the current is going to be flowing, uh, the same amount of current is going to be flowing through that branch, right? So this entire branch right here is going to feel the same amount of current. Let's call that current I1. And we also want to specify the direction of the current. And uh, in most cases, it's going to make sense, especially when there's only one battery, that we define the uh, current uh, as coming out of the positive terminal. So we're going to define I1 to be that direction. Right. Now, what happens when the current hits this junction? Right. What happens when the current hits that junction? Well, some of the current is going to be forced to go through the middle branch, and some of it's going to be forced to go upward. So we're going to have some current flow this way, and we'll call that I2. And some of the current must flow this way. We'll call it I3. right? So I2 is going to go through this branch right here, and I3 will continue through this branch as so, and at this point, both of those currents are going to add back up again and recreate I1. So if I wanted to trace the path of the current, it would look like this. All of the current is coming out of I1, and when it hits the junction, it splits, and then it adds back up at I2, and I just get this repeating cycle, all right? I just get this repeating cycle. So, Kirchhoff's first rule says that the current that enters into a junction must be the same amount of current that exits the junction. Okay? So, whatever total current I1 is hitting this junction must be the total current flowing out. In this case, what that means is that the currents I2 and I3 must add up to I1. But in words, it simply says the total current that enters a junction must be the current that exits a junction. So the total current that enters a junction must be the same amount of current that exits that junction, and this is essentially a conservation of charge. What this means is that charge is not building up anywhere in the circuit. None of the charges are getting dammed up and not being able to move. So there's a consistent and constant flow of charge through the circuit. Now, Kirchhoff's second rule says that the total voltage uh, across an entire closed loop. And in this particular circuit, we have three different closed loops that we can consider. We can consider the loop where we look at the battery and then go through I2 and then back through I1. So I have a closed loop here. I have a closed loop around the entire perimeter of the circuit. 
and I have a closed loop right here, right? Now, I have three branches of current. We've already seen that. I have I1 flowing through this branch, I have I2 flowing through this branch, and I3 through this branch, and the general rule is however many branches you have, that's how many loops you have, and that's how many currents you have, right? Uh, so what does Kirchhoff's second rule say? It says that the total voltage drop or used up across all uh, or across an individual loop okay, must add up to zero. What this means is that as the electrons go through the battery, they're going to gain voltage. And as they travel through the components, they're going to lose voltage. Now that's a rather simplistic idea, but the whole point is there are various points through any given loop that can be considered as giving the charges their potential energy, and then as they move through other elements, they're going to lose an equal amount of potential energy. Okay, So the total uh, change in voltage across any loop, closed loop is going to be zero. And this is a conservation of energy statement. All right, so that's a conservation of energy statement. Now, in the next video, we'll actually talk about how to implement uh, Kirchhoff's rules, and we'll do an explicit example. All right, so we'll see you in just a minute.